and another actress who's decided that uh, she loves Devon so much she doesn't ever want to leave is Susan George. This place completely and utterly arrested us. It was really a very, very special, unique part of the world. And once we come here several times, we just knew this is where we wanted to live. And it was almost as if we had lived here all our life. It was that much, it really felt like home. Every single part of Somerset, Devon, Cornwall, all down here, every time you cross a valley or a forge and enter another part of the vicinity, you open up another world and you, you could travel to across Europe in its entirety and you can find every little spot of Europe. If you once fell in love with it, you'll find it again in the West Country. Susan, your life here in the West Country is very different to the career that you've had being in some very well-known films. Did you have problems being a sex symbol? Um, if you're a sex symbol, well, she should be grateful, shouldn't you? I was grateful for being a sex symbol. It was lovely. <laughs> I enjoyed every moment of it, and I enjoyed what it, what it brought me. The only thing that I can say um, was that after, when you've made a couple of films, as I had, and they did involve nudity, which were all very integral to the part of the story at the time, and I always made sure that was a very important thing for me, that they were an integral part of the story. But when you have done that, of course, every script that comes through the post after that you get the script and the very first thing I would do is leaf through to see where I took my clothes off <laughs> <laughs> and see if it was necessary. Um, that is bound to happen and indeed did happen to me like it happens to many people. But um, one of the most difficult things to do was we had a, a tub, a bath scene to do and I had to be in this bath with Michael York who was delicious and I adored and he adored me. We had a great, great friendship. But actually getting out of the bath and running across the bathroom with no clothes on, I found unbelievably difficult to do so unbelievably difficult that I psyched myself up into a stupor about how I was going to get out of this bath I had somebody standing on the side holding a towel for me waiting for me to get out of the bath so I could make this quick dash past the camera where David Green the director had said you'll only see a tiny snippet of breast as you zoom past the camera we won't see a thing just you know go slowly take your time but it will be seconds finally the director said action and I got up and I was so fast to get out of this bath, I slipped on the soap and I went straight. I did a complete turnover and fell into this cameraman's arms who wrapped a towel around me. They had to prise me apart. <laughs> prize, I wouldn't let, no, 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 don't let me, don't let me. <laughs> Straw Dogs was a film that broke boundaries at the time. What was it like to be involved in that kind of film? Well, I will always feel very proud of the film and my life within it. It was an extraordinary film to make. I mean, at a time when international films just weren't coming to the United Kingdom. So when we knew this big film was coming to England, and certainly when I got the role, when Peckinpah cast me as Amy and my co-star was Dustin Hoffman, it was, it was a one-off. Leave me alone! Stop! I'm telling you, you asked for it! Okay. <laughs> you perhaps get to do one of those films, if you're lucky, one time in a career. And if you do, it stays with you all the days of your life, and it certainly will stay with me. I know you're now involved in producing film, so you're still very much involved in that kind of life. What about the other passion that you have for horses? I acquired this wonderful Arabian horse, bought her, um, got her in foal, um, began the process of breeding, and now I have loads and loads of horses. I have a vision for what my perfect Arab looks like. So I am now breeding using various stock and now our own stock and our own breed lines to acquire that vision, that particular type of Arab that I want to own and indeed see on this planet. And I hope that finally we're beginning to realize a bit of our lifetime lifetime dream within our farm and within Georgian Arabians. Well, I hope, on. I really hope you achieve it. Susan, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Mm -hmm.